Would you like to drive First presentation on this afternoon is going to be provided by Commander Ruth Lane, Director of and Commanding Officer of the U.S. National Life Center, and it's going to be on the U.S. National Life Center providing domain awareness at high latitudes. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome back from lunch. Uh, feel free to keep filling in. I'm Commander Ruth Lane. I'm excited to be here with you today. I'm an oceanographer with 19 years in the Navy, and I'm nearly halfway through a two-year tour as director of the U.S. National Ice Center, and I love my job. The National Ice Center is co-located with NOAA's Office of Satellite and Product Operations at the NOAA Satellite Operations Facility in Suitland, Maryland, about 10 miles southeast of here. The National Ice Center is a tri-agency organization composed of 40 Navy, NOAA, and Coast Guard personnel. We are civilians, military, and contractor personnel dedicated to providing global to tactical scale ice and snow products, ice forecasting, and related environmental intelligence services for the U.S. government. As I said, the National Ice Center is a tri-agency organization operated by Navy, NOAA, and Coast Guard personnel. We fall under the Department of Defense, Department of Commerce, and the Department of Homeland Security. NOAA works to understand and predict changes in climate, weather, oceans, and coasts, to share that knowledge with others, and to conserve and manage coastal and marine ecosystems and resources. The Coast Guard protects the public, the environment, and U.S. economic interests in the nation's ports and waterways along the coast or in any maritime region as required to support national security. The Navy maintains, trains, and equips combat-ready naval forces capable of winning wars, deterring aggression, and maintaining freedom of the seas. Three bosses, three mission sets. Navy, NOAA, and Coast Guard have each published an agency-specific Arctic strategic guidance derived from the President's National Strategy for the Arctic Region. Published in 2013, the National Strategy for the Arctic Region championed three lines of effort to advance security interests, pursue responsible stewardship, and strengthen international cooperation. So three bosses, three mission sets, a wide range of customers. Each of our parent agencies has a unique mission <laughs> with a unique customer base, but they all have a universal need for quality information to inform decision making. From publicly releasable analysis vice extent, concentration and characterization, to tailored imagery products and forecasts for naval submarines, Coast Guard cutters, and national icebreakers, the National Ice Center provides domain awareness of the physical environment. So now that you know a little bit more about the team I represent, let me turn to maritime domain awareness. The 2005 National Plan to Achieve Maritime Domain Awareness, published by the Department of Homeland Security, defines domain awareness as the effective understanding of anything associated with a global maritime domain that could impact security, safety, economy, or environment of the United States. Security, safety, economy, and environment. So maritime domain awareness is a concern for all three of my bosses. Domain awareness is a key component of an active, layered maritime defense in depth. It is achieved through the collection, fusion, analysis, display, and dissemination of actionable information and intelligence. Teams monitor activities in the maritime domain through the interconnected use of land, air, space, and sea-based radars, sensors, and information systems to identify and evaluate potential and actual maritime threats in a timely manner and to fuse and analyze data or distribute and distribute information to enhance operational decision-making processes and support operational planning. Legacy sensors are integrated with current and emerging capabilities to provide a common operational picture for information sharing, situational awareness, and collaborative planning. Critical to this effort is the coordination collaboration, collaboration excuse me, of federal, state, local, tribal, and international partners, as well as the private sector. Physical domain awareness has two main features, characterization and exploitation. Characterization of the environment involves observation, analysis, and prediction. Exploitation requires the tailoring and integration of environmental information by subject matter experts. The snow and ice analysts of the National Ice Center characterize and exploit the environment every day to provide domain awareness to the nation. I would like to share some examples of domain awareness from the National Ice Center with you. The principles of consistency, relevancy, Accuracy and timeliness are imperative to providing the right information at the right time for the right decision. Consistency. 
I mentioned we have about 40 personnel to cover a global area of operations. To maximize our efforts, we leverage domestic and international partnerships for environmental characterization and exploitation. We are a member of the North American Ice Service with the Coast Guard's International Ice Patrol and the Canadian Ice Service. We participate in Global Cryosphere Watch, the International Ice Charting Working Group, and the expert team on sea ice. Together, we strive for harmonized products to provide seamless domain awareness to operators moving through our overlapping areas of responsibility. Relevancy, the National Ice Center works closely with Naval Research Laboratory's Stennis Space Center as they develop the next generation global ocean forecast system. An ocean ice now casting and forecasting capability coupling the hybrid coordinate ocean model, HICOM, the community ice code, sea ice, and the Navy global environmental model, NAVGEM. It uses Navy coupled ocean data assimilation, ENCODA, to assimilate satellite observations such as sea surface height and sea surface temperature and in situ observations from ships, buoys, gliders, and floats. National Ice Center is leveraging the Goff's ice strain product and in house subject matter expertise to develop a heuristic ice strain and fracturing risk assessment tool. This five day forecast of fracture risk will enable operational commanders to maximize accomplishment of exercise goals while minimizing risk to forces forward, such as during the Navy's biannual ice exercise held north of the Arctic Circle. Accuracy. Inaccurate products are not useful to the end user, and accuracy is improved through observations. Observations are scarce at the high latitudes. National Ice Center coordinates execution of the U.S. Interagency Arctic Buoy Program and U.S. involvement with the International Arctic Buoy Program with the University of Washington Applied Physics Laboratory Polar Science Center, we are pleased to provide USIABP 10 buoys this year for deployment to the data sparse observation zones in the Arctic Ocean. We leverage satellite Earth observation products from NOAA, NASA, DOD, Canada, and Europe, and drive development of algorithms for identification of icebergs, ice concentration, and thickness. We support NASA's Operation IceBridge and SNOWX to provide calibration and validation of satellite Earth observation. We are excited for the continued development of the U.S. Arctic Observing Network led by NOAA and the National Science Foundation under the Interagency Arctic Research Policy Committee, as well as the latest five-year departmental research in initiative from the Office of Naval Research on an Arctic mobile observing system. Comprehensive Arctic observations improve not only Arctic weather prediction and ice forecasts, but are also a key contributor to the accuracy of weather prediction in more temperate zones, such as the continental United States as well as hurricane track and intensity forecasts. Timeliness. National Ice Center requirements carry a timeliness factor. We have a daily battle with them, but our customers are global, so our analysts are on call 24 hours a day. We provide annotated satellite imagery products to approved government customers within six hours of the imagery capture, which means imagery is required to be delivered to our watch team within three hours of the observation. We are grateful to the satellite imagery providers who enable our timely production support, especially the professionals at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Looking to the future, National Ice Center operations align closely with two of the U.S. Arctic Research Commission's six recommended Arctic research goals following the White House Arctic Science Ministerial last fall. Goal number one, to observe, understand, and predict Arctic environmental change, and goal number six, enhance international scientific cooperation in the Arctic. National Ice Center operations are increasingly aligned with Navy and NOAA weather prediction and warning, and we have seen similar alignment initiatives with our international partner ice centers. National Ice Center goals to transition science to watch floor operations in fiscal year 18 are focused on forecast product development, forecast verification, automation, and sensing strategy optimization. We are developing several new products and tools for our customers. In addition to the ice fracture risk assessment, we are working with Navy and Coast Guard to provide ice information to vessels as overlays available in their electronic charting and display systems. We are working with DHS, Arctic Domain Awareness Center at the University of Alaska Anchorage to provide an ice condition scale, which allows the Coast Guard and public mariners to determine navigation safety of a shipping route from ice condition information derived from satellite imagery. We are excited for Finland's chairmanship of the Arctic Council and their goal to improve meteorological cooperation. The Finnish Meteorological Institute is one of our partners in the International Ice Coordination Working Group, and they are getting domain awareness right. Finland 
is the only country in the world where each of their seaports ices over in the winter, but the Finns don't let it dampen their activity. FMI provides consistent, accurate, relevant, and timely information to keep their country moving, and we look forward to learning about their best practices. We are excited for NOAA and NASA and the future of U.S. Earth observation. GO-16 launched successfully last fall, and the imagery is breathtaking. NOAA announced that when operational testing is complete, GO-16 will take over the GO's east role. Upcoming launches include the Joint Polar Satellite System scheduled to launch this fall and the Ice Cloud and Land Elevation Satellite, ISAT-2, next year. At the National Ice Center, we are particularly interested in NISAR, a joint endeavor between NASA and India's Space Research Organization to field a space-based synthetic aperture radar optimized for studying hazards and global environmental processes. SAR imagery has proven the most effective for analysis of ice extent concentration and characterization because it's not blocked by the pervasive clouds found at high latitudes and is independent of daylight. It's an exciting time to be part of the nation's domain awareness team in the Arctic. I love my job. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Harut. Let's open it for questions. You're not going to let her escape that easily. There's, There's one, one there. We've been working on our customer outreach program. That's one of the first steps, I think. Um, it's been difficult to try to determine exactly who's been using our web page. That's always a great challenge. Uh, I'll be honest, we're not happy with our web page, but we're working on, on bringing that into the future. Uh, I mentioned we're realigning with the weather centers. As, uh, as the National Ice Center NOAA side moves over to National Weather Service and Ocean Prediction Center, we expect we'll get a new web page through that, and we look forward to optimizing it. We're doing the same on the Navy side, and we're just trying to make it more user-friendly. We've had a lot of feedback that our products aren't always easy to find, or the research teams that are trying to get packaged bundles of data, because we've got it, wouldn't it be useful if you could get it and use it? Do you, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. And this is my operations officer, Christian Blatchford, <laughs> in the front row, and my technical director, Karen Panowitz. Please seek them out if you guys have any ideas for how we can make things better. Any other questions from the audience? One in the way back. It's in the light. <laughs> yeah. Be blind. Yeah. Um. I'm not familiar with Ruth, that. Ruth, could you problem. could you repeat the question? We just got a, a note here saying that people online cannot hear the questions. Question. So could you repeat or just I a bit? I think he wants to know if we can assess the degradation that's associated with albedo from carbon deposits on the ice. Right. Where's my science officer? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for that, but it's something I could look into, and okay. if you give me your name afterwards, I'll get a response back to you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? If not, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.